Hello again, it's good to be back with you. In today's lesson, I'm going to talk about least squares curve fits. Now, this is something many of us do a lot. If you've ever used Excel or another spreadsheet program, there's that little add trend line feature you can use. That's a least squares curve fit. And a least squares curve fit is an example of optimization, although often we don't realize it's optimization. Well, if we're going to press that button a lot when we're working with Excel, wouldn't it be good if we knew what it, what it, what it was doing? Sounds like a good idea, so let's do that. Here's, here's basically how least squares curve fits operate. We'll to learn this first, and then uh, we'll go back and figure out what mathematically what's really going on. Let's say I have three points, and I'll just use three to start to keep it simple. You can use any number of points, okay? And I want to fit a line through those. Well, if I click the Add, add Trend Line button, I might get something that looks like that. Well, that is an optimal fit. What's optimal mean? Well, it's better than all the other fits that the program could have used to make those. Well, let's, let's start labeling some things here and maybe see if we can get a sort of mathematical handle on what's going on. That's point x1, y1. That's x2, y2. And that's x3, y3. Okay. This, my curve fit, I'll call F, X, Y. Now these, these are finite points. These are data. This is a continuous function. Now why would you want a continuous function to approximate data? And this data could mean anything. It could be measured data. It could be financial uh, data. It could be population. Who knows? But it's, what we're trying to do is we're trying to come up with a function that, that's close to all our data points. And there's a couple of reasons you'd want to do that. One possible one is that we're trying to find trends, add trend line. Well, these three points are trending upward and to the right. If we added more points, we would kind of expect them to go out that way. Another is that if you're running a mathematical model, sometimes it's hard to put data points into your model. It's, if your model is continuous, you want a continuous approximation to your data. So that's another reason. There are others, but those are the two big ones that you see a lot. All right. Um, for this to be optimal, how is it optimal? Well, what it's doing is it's minimizing the error between your data points and that curve. Well, how's it doing that? Let's do this. Let's, let's define an error here. And actually, let's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clear some room out here. Get rid of that, that, and that, and then maybe this. Okay, clean that out. Let's call this distance vertical distance from the point to the line E1, just for error 1. And this one I'll call E2. Should have put that on the other side. Sorry, gang. And this one. I'll call E3. All right, so there you go. Well, how about adding those up, minimizing the error, and calling it good? Let's try that. E, the total error is E1 plus E2 plus E3. Okay, so minimize that, we're good to go, except there's a problem. This isn't going to work as I have it written down there right now. This is below the line, so we'll call that error negative. We'll call this one positive and that one negative. If this one was really big and the sum of those two was also really big but with an opposite sign, we could have very large errors, individual errors, that all added up to pretty close to zero. Okay, well that's not going to help. Or I could have an, an, a, a negative error so big it swamped all the others and I had a very large negative error. Well, that's less than zero. That's when you minimize error. I, can, I want to make E1 huge. That's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to get these as close to that line as we can. Well, how are we going to do it? So zero is the minimum, no matter whether you're positive or negative. Well, you, you probably see this coming. Square these. doesn't matter whether you've got a positive number or a negative number. Once you square it, the lowest that thing can possibly be is zero. So if every one of these points goes exactly through that line, the sum total of the errors will be zero. And the only way the, the, the lo lowest value this can have is zero, the only way it can get to that point, or that uh, value, is if those points all go through that line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write these out mathematically, 
and then uh, uh, add them up and then minimize the function. So one last step here. I need a function to use to fit. Now I can pick absolutely anything. Um, I'm going to use a straight line here just for simplicity, but uh, there are some very, very good curve fitting programs available right now. There used to be one called Table Curve that would go through six or eight thousand fits. It was just like magic. It was great. don't know if it's still around. But the point is good curve fitting software could use many, many different possible curve fitting functions. The fact that I'm using a, a straight line here is only for simplicity. Any function you want, you can use. Now, there's such a thing as overfitting your data. If you use some crazy rational polynomial or something, you better have a pretty good reason for doing it. I've been an engineer for, I don't know, 35 years or so now, and I've used rational polynomials once where it was really called for, and I, I, I could justify it. So 35 years, I went to those really crazy functions once. Most of the time I'm doing uh, low order polynomials, long straight lines, parabolas, things like that, because I don't have a real solid reason, a good physical argument for using anything more than that. So don't overfit your data. Let's do this. Okay, that's the equation for a straight line. Back in, I don't know, junior high school or something, your teacher probably said mx plus b. Um, I'm not sure how M came to be the uh, letter we used for slope, but that gets used a lot. I'm using A, B's, and C's because I'm going to be using this, uh, this uh, format later in the class, so I'm going to try to stick with a common, common description for right now. Now, it's tempting to say X is your variable. It's not. It's part of the curve that while we're doing the curve fit. This is numbers. We know what these are. Okay? If we don't know what those numbers are, we can't do a curve fit. So these X, Y locations, those are data. Those are not variables. So the act of curve fitting means find those. Ah, there we go. That was terrible. There we go. Um, so find those. Right? So for the act of curve fitting means that the, what, what will eventually be your constants. Those are your design variables now. Those are the things you want to identify. If we can identify A and B, we've done a curve fit. All right, so what do our errors look like? Well, E1 is going to look like Y1 minus AX1 plus B. And we'll square that. Okay, Y is this, Y1 is that point right there. The vertical distance is Y minus the distance, minus the, uh, uh, or, uh, curve there, or assume function which is AX plus B, and we know what X is. That's a data point. Now, I've got a Y1 minus that. I can reverse it if I want to. It doesn't matter because I'm squaring this. This is one of the few times in your life where you can play kind of fast and loose with minus signs and get away with it. So that's E1. Well, E2 is going to be the same. And since this is so easy to write down, this starts looking an awful lot like an algorithm. This would be pretty easy to program, and it is. It's, it's not hard at all. And so E3 is just going to be the, uh, uh, well, let's just write it out for completeness here. Just to make sure everybody comes along for the right, and there's E3. So add all those up, and you've got your objective function. See, i got room here. You can see that. Okay. So what this looks like, let's see if I can get this right on the first try. Trying to write a little smaller so I can fit it all on my board here. Okay, there's your objective function, and my design variables are A and B. If I can find A and B, I've found this. Right? So um, rather than try to do this analytically, which gets kind of complicated, let's go to some software. I'll start with Excel, and then we'll go to MATLAB. Let's make some data points, though. Let's say that X and Y are, let's see, we'll call that 1, 1, 2, 2, and 3, 2. Okay, close enough. Those will, we'll use those points. And we're going to find, so there's one, two, and two. This is actually lower than one. Let's make that 
maybe a half. Okay, I want to keep these numbers round if I can. So there's what we've got. Let's take those data points, which represent, they're, they're drawn right there, and let's find a straight line that fits those optimally. Let's find the least squares curve fit. Now let's do the curve fit we just talked about using Excel. So here we go. Let's start with by making ourselves some X data that we used 1, 2, and 3. And in the Y we had 0 0.5, 2, and 2. So making a plot out of this is pretty straightforward. We'll just highlight our data, go up to Insert, grab the scatter plot. I don't need the chart title there, so we'll get rid of that. We have th those are our three points, just like we had on the board earlier. So I'll click there to highlight that data series. Right click, add trend line, and the linear curve fit is the default, so I don't even have to pick anything over here. I want to see the equation and display the r squared, and we really lucked out on this one. It, uh, the curve fit came out very, very simple. On the board, we said y equals ax plus b, and you could see that a is the slope, and that's 0.75, and b is 0. The line actually goes through 0. Now, r squared, if you haven't uh, seen it before, is a measure of how uh, accurately the, your curve goes through all the points you've got. If r squared is 1.000 whatever, it means that the curve is going through all your points. Um, ideally, you want r squared to be pretty high. Uh, R squared of 0 is terrible, uh, basically you've got random noise, and R squared of 1 means your curve goes through every point. So here we are. Um, by the way, if you uh, uh, remember junior high school algebra, your teacher probably said Y equals MX plus B. That's just sort of standard terminology that's left over from I don't know when. And uh, again, M, our slope is 0.75 and B is 0. So that was pretty easy. Let's try it now in MATLAB where we'll cast it as an optimization problem. Now let's do the same curve fit in MATLAB. There's, like any, everything else in MATLAB, there's many ways to do this. I'm going to show you two right now. The first is we're going to use fmin search, which is probably the simplest of the canned optimization uh, functions that are in MATLAB. It doesn't need derivatives or anything. As long as you know what your objective function is, you're good to go. So rather than have you watch me type it back in, I'm going to recall a command I typed in before. Okay, so E, capital E, is my total error. That at C thing means this is going to be a, an anonymous function, and I'm going to use the letter C to stand for the variables in that function. I use C because those are the constants we're uh, trying to find. Often you use X or Y in here, and I wanted to make sure we didn't confuse the constants we're trying to find with the X's and Y's we already have as part of our little uh, collection of data. So if you remember from the whiteboard, we have y1 minus, and this whole quantity in here, is mx plus b. Well, m, we don't know what that is, or ax plus b, I guess is what I called it. There it is right there. There's That's a. That's the first constant we don't know. x, well, x1 is 1 plus b. Well, I don't know that either, so there it is, and I've squared it. Same thing. y2, which is now 2, and subtract are this constant times x2, which is 2, plus b, square that. And the same thing over here. There's y3, and there's x3 right there. So I go there, uh, just hit return. I didn't put a uh, semicolon at the end, so it does echo to the screen. And the next thing to do, the last thing to do, is to type in fmin search. I'll recall that command. Capital E for the anonymous function we've just defined and I have to give it a starting point. Well, I don't know what to use, so I'm just going to use 0, 0. If I hit return, there it is. Because these terms all look about the same, it's pretty easy to assemble this error function using a loop or something like that. This structure lends itself to efficient programming pretty well. So the fact that we're using uh, three data points rather than some larger number doesn't really matter. Now, there's another way to do this. Let me clear this. In fact, I'll clear the memory so our workspace just got cleaned out. We don't have anything in there. There's x, again, just recalling a command from before, and there's y. 
So I've got our list of x's and y's now loaded into the workspace. I could plot this if I want. And it says, there it is right there. Well, that's not really kind of how we want it, what we had on our screen before. So I'll turn the line off, no line, and then I'll use maybe circles for markers. There they are. And I can change the uh, x and y range if I want to. But you can see right there, with the, there's our data. It's, it's in memory. We can plot it. If we can plot it and the picture comes out right, that's a pretty strong indication that I uh, haven't made any mistakes so far. But I'm going to turn on something right now called CF Tool, Curve Fit Tool. This is a little interactive tool that's built into MATLAB. And what it, let me get it on the screen here. There we go, so you can see it. There's what it looks like. This is a little interactive, uh, basically an app that's built into MATLAB. There are several like this. There's, there's, this certainly isn't the only one. And you can tell it what you want your X and Y data to be. They have to be loaded into the workspace. So there it is. There's X and Y loaded in. And you, it's got uh, our points, but it also automatically did the fit. I have auto fit checked, so it did the fit already. Uh, polynomial of degree one. So the degree one polynomial is a straight line. And there's a bunch of other uh, features here you can mess with if you want. But if you go over here, it shows you that we're using a polynomial of degree one, a straight line. And they're calling P1 and P2 the parameters you want to find. We called them A and B on the whiteboard, and we called them C in the example just now where I typed it in. And what are the coefficients? 0.75 and 0 there. So there they are. Um, goodness of fit. I'm not sure what SSE means. I've got to go look that up. R squared is 0.75. So those numbers agree with what we found using the fmin search and the Excel example. So we've got it. I'm going to turn this off. Okay, do you want to? No, I don't want to save my session. Um, so we've now. Uh, gone over how to do a least squares curve fit and done the curve fit two different ways uh, with Excel and with MATLAB both using the same uh, objective function. We've shown that it is an example of optimization and just want to leave you with a reminder that the fact that we used a linear function was just for this example. You can use any function you want. The only rule is you have to have at least as many data points as you have unknown parameters. If you have exactly as many data points as unknown parameters, there is only one solution. It's not really a least squares curve fit at that point. It's just uh, fitting a curve through points. If you have more data points than you have unknown parameters, then it really does become an optimization problem, and you really are finding a curve with the least squared error.